So before Canon comes back, so there has been a lot of stuff in Korea. They're just going to show like how much of the roadmap stuff have been done. They're going to share some statistics and maybe some hot topics that you guys already think about. Yeah, New yeah. content, maybe. They're not going to share too much. These are usually an hour to an hour and a half. They're the only developer that, that kind of look at chat. Oh, there we go. So there's no three. It's just the developer, uh, the main the main uh director okay so he's he's laughing right now he's reacting to chat so he is looking at chat as well apparently today is makoko's birthday and then he wanted to talk about the game while celebrating makoko's birthday um, so right now he's going to start with talking about the makoko event also going to be fan kits uh, and graphics design stuff that they can share too so there is like a, a april fools event still going on uh, what happens is if you try to log in they have the old loading screen a long time ago during the beta with the seagulls and that event is going to be going until wednesday so we're going to be seeing some seagulls it's going to talk about behemoth Behemoth is the latest raid that we have, 1640 eye level, 16 man raid. So going to talk about the purpose of the raid and then the direction of the raid too. So basically, Lost Ark, they gave itself how he feels of like, if you have a better physical ability, meaning like your micro skills and stuff, those people tend to have an advantage on the content that they release. For those people who are really good at the game, uh, the, the highest content that they have, like something like Inferno modes, etc. So for Behemoth, what they did was the gimmicks and phys uh, physical required for behemoth is a little bit lower compared to what they people have because it's also like they want to try something else like they want to try something new for the game but the reason why they mentioned uh about like people who are good at the game like they, they might be really sad that it's too easy right but not everyone's like that so he's talking about that for example he's talking about the death counter right if the death counter did not exist for behemoth it would be insanely much harder and then he also added a new system in behemoth where if you break their armor like their head etc you get to see like way more damage this is something like times two plus right you get to see big damage so these are the options that, like these are these small things that like he's mentioning like this new stuff that they're trying to figure out i mean as for character growth it's not as big as you think so clearing behemoth you get to transcend your weapon and that's about like six to six point five percent damage increase and support gets like a little bit more buff too so like when you beat behemoth if you give no if you get nothing out of it it doesn't kind of feel like doing the raid anyway but he didn't do it too much because he's planning through a little bit more of a bigger picture to progress characters here's an important thing that he missed here so he usually play on pugs too he's a pugger he's talking about like the difficulty difference between like what makes this stressful what makes the behemoth very stressful versus like all these other things and then he's kind of looking at like he wants to look more if 60 people are really the issue so the issue is not just one thing but like there's could be other things too or is it the problem of having uh 1640 eye level is that the issue the eye level being too high or is the support issue? Like, there's all these different different options so for example the ratio between the support and dps were about like 70 uh, 70 ish to like 23 right 27 that's so over this new raid the activity for like entering the year the first week was much higher like voldis was a little bit lower but these days like 16 the 16 men raid mm. so for example when when Behemoth came out in one week, uh, 6040 eye level character have increased it by 15% because that's actually a lot because it costs a lot of money too. He has no thought about releasing 16 more 16 men raids and uh, with this thing, what he thinks is, he thinks Lost Ark raid would be uh, usually 8 uh, and there's no more 16 man raid being planned in the future. Uh, so he's going to be talking about raid fatigue as well after while talking about Behemoth. So up to here, uh, he talk, we're talking about raid fatigue for releasing the raid when you raise the new raid you need to increase your character's power vertically too so for in this case right now there's no immediate end game content coming out soon like when he say soon as in like three months but there's no like too much decision but like he just shared this opinion of like how, how often he should release uh end game content so full d's it's four gates so he's gonna talk about so i think maybe uh, there's a chance that he might decrease the gate for all here and the elixirs 
in general and maybe want to make it easier for new players. Uh, so what he's worrying about, uh, thinking about right now is which gate to delete for Loldies. But he hasn't really decided it. So we're not going to hear like what the decision of like what they're going to delete probably. Oh, so for the summer update, uh, he's going to share the solo content and their decision of doing what they're going to do. And then he meant he also mentioned that on top of that is we might think the solo content as not as important but he said he, he feels that this solo content is going to be very important yeah so what his goal is for example to a certain point in the game uh, like lost a certain point in the game you should be able to increase your power to a certain amount alone yeah so for soloing uh, the mechanics are going to be like transferred from 8 man to like 1 right uh, and, uh, and your goal is going to be you know you have to know the patterns etc all these things but you're doing it yourself so you don't have to like blame others if you like wipe and stuff so he's gonna talk about the balances so everyone have different perspectives so how they usually think about think it is some some classes are strong at the and some classes are not as strong as like kinna etc and if they have a class that falls into those category they tend to fix and look and fix things and what he was say is you know by data wise that we see uh there are no classes that really just breaks the average uh, is, that's what it says as for changing way too often is some people do increase their mastery in the class right and then if that mastery increases the average player base of playing that class skill increases so then you nerf afterwards and then let's say they nerf it and then they nerf it too much they upgrade it again so if they do that people will be too worried about making a character because they'd be just afraid of getting nerfed and stuff oh uh, so he's talking about the west data with the dps meter and stuff that's shown in the Things. So he's asking people to not use DPS meter. And it feels that DPS meter has way more uh, negative impact than positive impact. He doesn't really like it. Is that it, it is bannable, right? Like if Korea is bannable, yes. So how he, he is stressed about his lost heart, like, you know, the balance, like, classes, again, like, they just send weaker, all these things, too, but, like, he, 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 he keeps stressing out that environmental variance is way, too, like, really, really high, right, as in, this game is an action game, so, like, the player base has a lot of impact, the builds have a lot of impact, the raid environment also has a lot of impact. For example, like Voldy, it's like gate 1 is way different than gate 3 or something like that. And what they're trying to do is they, just, they really wanted to keep balancing as much as they can. Uh, and not just DPS, but like stagger and then tankiness. Like, like for a certain class being too squishy, etc. Yeah, but the sensitivity of the class balance itself, he feels that everyone is very sensitive to class balances considering the uh, the data that we see. For example, like he's say he he's saying you guys, I know you guys are really mad in another way, and then it feels that because this is uh, this has been uh, getting worse and worse in a spiral uh, after Theomine, and I kind of get it because Theomine is a very difficult raid. <laughs> Oh, they need to. They need to come out and just say they're going to buff Breaker. That's what they need to. That's what they need to say. Breaker came first. <laughs> So another thing, uh, so another thing that he thought about all these things is uh, not just the uh, class itself. He's mentioning engravings too. Oh, so additionally, he's thinking, what if we make the class engraving go back and forth? So for example, in this case, Canon, you can play Shura in one raid and you can play Kingfist on the other. That would be interesting. Is giving more option to the players to switch around. I, I don't know how how would they do that though? Because all the engravings would be completely different. Okay, now he's going yeah. over to the weapon. Transcendence. Transcendence is a system that you, got, you guys are gonna get with the mind. And the issue is, uh, since transcendence give you one flat of increase of something like an attribute. Uh, some classes don't actually get that much of an efficiency uh, compared to others. For example, the weapon uh, transcendence for support, Paladin is getting the worst out of the three uh, because you get meter back. You get a meter refund with the weapon transcendence. And if you use Paladin's ult right away, you kind of miss like 20% because uh, you get 90% back if you use Awakening. Paladin is like a little bit less efficient, uh, efficient right now with uh, weapon transcendence added. So he's talking about those kind of stuff and he's looking into fixing it. So some people are 
asking to extend the first event uh, because people still haven't cleared it yet. And then he said no. Next Wednesday is the last day for the first. The time base was 26 weeks. Oh, so out of the user base who have 1630 eye level plus characters, 38.5% have the Eclipse title. Wait, wait, how many people have the 35%? 38. Uh, have Eclipse title, which is clearing uh, the mind the first level. Wait, 38. The whole user, the user base, no, no, the user base who have more than 16, uh, 30 eye level uh, account. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, and then he's mentioning is uh, the reason why he can't tell the uh, the domain expansions uh, official like strategy to clear uh, to execute. Uh, is he can't really talk about it because other countries are going to be doing the first event too. And then uh, he's also said, you know, oh, oh, there's no right, there, there's no like correct strategy in terms of mechanics and stuff. For example, it can, uh, there's a thing called a fly trap. We're not doing it the right way, but we're just doing it because it's easier. Now he's going to go over and talk MVP. Then we talk about is uh, the radius support, MVP, etc. They're trying other things. So uh, the support MVP, there's another badge where uh, it based it off of four player, uh, four players, because like if you're an A player, you can't really get radiant support if your party's DPS is much stronger than the other party. So there is like a separate badge uh, to check if you actually did a good job as a support. Maybe it's a little bit more complicated because it's four people. I don't know if I clipped it, but like when I did support me and my blue stuff, I had like seven badges. It was weird. <laughs> but like it's like some bug. Since it's still like try phase where people are still not used to the raid, uh, they probably need to monitor a little more. That's true, it's only been the second week of Behemoth. But considering a second week of Behemoth, if you actually have 60 people who cleared it, it's very easy. So yeah, I laughed about, I guess chat asked about female paladin and says no. And then he asked uh, not talk about specific classes so that he can answer. Yeah, is that every, yeah everyone's kind of like mad with whatever that their class are playing. Unless I heard it wrong, I think it was just straight up. I think he just said straight up, because Pally has a lot of problems right now. So I can't tell if it's female Pally or just regular Pally. I, I didn't hear it properly. It might be, it might be wrong. So here he uh, says for Clash, uh, he doesn't want to touch the difficulty of clashing on Theomai. Uh, we got a present ready for us. Battle items. Yay. And car packs. Yay. Kakao talk emoticon emotes on the game. Yay. Oh, yeah, it looks really good actually. By the way, you can use that in Kakao talk, yes. Have, have they always had these stickers for Kakao Talk? Or no, no, it's a new one. Brand new? Yeah. So this is actually a huge W. Yeah. No one cares for... in the West, but in yeah. Korea, everyone yeah, uses Kakao Talk, so. And the last present. Ah. That's the new avatar, the director avatar. Director Makoko avatar. They're about 10 years. That was super exciting, to be honest. I mean, I don't know what I was... That's, uh, the, 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 the thing is, the thing is what people... I mean, they do this all the time, right? It, there's nothing... They never talk about anything major here. But it's more like a prelude of what they're gonna show on the summer. Every time we have this session, everyone gets really angry and saying it's a waste of time, etc. But this is why I tell them, if they want to do something like this, they just need to do it often. So that they people kind of know people kind of expect because if they haven't done this in a long time if they haven't done it in a long time people have people's expectancy goes up and then when they don't answer questions that they wanted to be answered specifically they just get angry so in this case if they do this more often it'd be much better in general summary it would be we know this problem, we're working on it. We know this problem, we're working on it. We know this problem, we're working on it. Yeah, there's DPS meter. Don't use DPS meter. The class is really hard to balance, but we're also looking to different aspects. The environmental variance is really, it's like, it's like the general stuff that you would answer, but not having like a, an actual action uh, to back it up. And when you do that, it, obviously people do get mad about it because they go like, oh, you wasted my time, etc. But you know, like if they want to do this to make it more friendly to the community, they should do this more often. Uh, if I give you like a summary, right? There's no 16 man raid anymore, but it was like a good test bed. Like Voldies, they're going to release the, reduce the gate. In summer, they're going to show you not end, they might not even have it because they're not thinking of make, uh, releasing an immediate end game raid. And that's like three, three months. So we're going to be having, we're 
got to be stuck with this endgame content for now. Mention about Class Rattlesnake, but he is looking into different solutions. Some of the other things that like he's looking into engravings, etc. to have options, other options. And then uh, the more, I guess the more prelude, the thing that they wanted to announce was on summer, there's going to be solo content, right? Like they're going to release like how the solo content is going to be. And their goal set of that is a lot more important than you think. They consider that one to be a higher project by making in terms of if you just start the game alone, you can just pretty much progress into the very end game is uh, by yourself. The general sense he shared was eight man gimmicks being a one man gimmick thing. It can just do whatever. Yeah. So other than that, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are upset about it. This is how it usually is. On the next stream, which is the low on summer or might they might do it again one time. It depends how people be feeling about it. Yeah, this is how it went.